Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, and one of the rare times that we're not actually doing my career mode save. Uh, the main reason for that is that obviously we've got the Juno mission coming up, and I want all the vehicles to be like perfect for it perfect and i'm having a lot of trouble with the hand guider but we will talk about that during the actual episode of that right now what we're going to do is well we're going to go through the development process of this i'm actually going to try and hold off naming what it is and what it does until later on in the episode because hey what's what's wrong with a sense of mystery hey guys Ooh. Uh, there are enough clues on screen, by the way, if you really try want to know what's going on. Right, anyway, so yeah, the problem right now is I'm trying to make this stand upright on its wheels. I want this to be mobile, uh, but I also want it to be like relatively stable as well, because uh, accuracy is the key here. Now, whilst trying to balance things out, I have noticed that I've created a little bit of a face on the front here, and I love it when that happens. I, If I can put a face on my, my builds, I really do like to try and make that happen, because the, what's wrong with a bit of personality in your builds? It, I, it lets me build a bit of a rapport with this particular vehicle, and hopefully you guys will too, this, this, this brave little soul here. Okay, so what what actually is it? So you can see down the bottom that we've got an engine, and that is not for moving this vehicle around. And indeed, it is for imparting thrust onto something else. Uh, another problem is that the wheels that I keep choosing to use just don't don't cut it. They're 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 not doing very well. They're not the strongest wheels in the world. But I've put things these girders exactly uh, indeed on the bottom at a weird angle, which means that every time I replace the wheels, I've got to try and do it at some weird angle. Plus, if nothing is as strong as it needs to be you know Kerbal being the game that it is the joyous experience that it is um, everything just kind of wobbles around and, and, and just is a mess a terrible mess to try and drive around uh, so I'm having troubles with the support structure down there you can see uh, I don't know if you guys have this trouble I, I know I do and a few of the people that I talk to do but the wheels those oh so useful rover wheels just never seem to come out in the right orientation whenever you pick it up from the part depository yeah, that's what I'm going to call it, but part depository there, um, and pop it onto your vehicle. They always seem to be orientated either upside down or like 90 degrees off. They never seem to be the way around that they need to be used. And I think this is a serious issue that really needs to be addressed. But enough of my whinging, because if all we do is complain about these things and don't learn how to work around them, well, then we're never going to get anywhere in the game. And well, that's kind of how I feel at the moment about career mode but right now i'm kind of brainstorming different ways of attaching the wheels to these different uh support structures that i'm building here um so i'm trying the octagonal struts at the moment because my theory there was it's got a nice flat side on the side it being an octagon that's like flat sides on all of the four faces that we won't really want to worry about um now using the gadgets on the back here i throw some other ones on the back because yeah same same reasoning stands and trying to uh, or orientate these wheels in the right direction is definitely a bit of an issue but we throw the fuel tank back on front and let's go out and have a look it looks quite stable it looks quite stable but at the same time it's not going anywhere and i'm not sure why it's not going anywhere i have a look around and it's just I don't know, Con confusing, very confusing right now. So I, I straight off come in and see if we can just like shunt these wheels about a bit. Maybe moving them down is all that really needs to happen at this point. And aside from one trifling technical issue of an explosion there at the bottom, it actually works all right. Um, it is a little bit top heavy and unstable, but given the size and shape of the vehicle, not just not not unsurprising just got to take it a little bit um gently right so now we've got this thing on the bottom here and uh, what i want to do is be able to point it forwards because i want to push stuff forwards um so we need to get uh, a different a more finessed support structure in there all my rough prototype i had was uh, a single i-beam running down well it's not really an i-beam it is one of those long i-beams uh running down to the bottom and then i just stuck it on the bottom uh, stuck the engine on the bottom using the gadgets to rotate it a little bit now whilst that worked in principle we could definitely do with giving it a second pass uh, and there we go we've got enough ground clearance to be able to roll around a bit uh, i've not taken it off the the um what's this thing called airstrip yet uh mainly because i don't really trust it but we're, we're gonna see what happens uh tried to go for a bit of a wheelie didn't really work didn't really work okay so now obviously we need to make this engine functional and, and for that we're going to go with the fuel line uh we could try and like put it onto the bottom of the fuel tank and then twist it around in a funny manner i'm not sure whether that means it's joined up or not 
Um, that might be something we have to test out at some point. Or if anybody knows, please do let me know. So now we're just trying to attach a command pod somewhere on this vehicle. Just because I want a Kerbal on board. What it's for, well, we'll find out with this, uh, well, not that one. But possibly with a, uh, a full-scale test of everything we're trying to do here. As should be demonstrated right now. So we're going to get Jebediah out and we're just going to stand him in a rough random place somewhere. Get rid of the capsule and then try and position the engine nozzle right there. Right by Jebediah. Now, I thought this would just be a simple case of turning around, getting into the right position and, and everything would be wonderful. But obviously, as I've said, this vehicle is massively top heavy. And also it doesn't like to stop, it turns out. Okay, so what I've been doing here is turning up my engine thrust as full as possible and then just kind of activating and shutting down the engine very quickly with the push of the button there. And I'm finding out that maybe this engine isn't quite in the right place. All I seem to do is give him a little shove to the side or if I jump him right into the beam, uh, well, yeah, the beam, why not? Uh, he ends up getting all smashed into the floor and stuff. So what we want to do is try and angle it up a little bit. And thankfully, with the spangly new gadgets they've given us in the uh, latest update, that is the simplest thing. Well, it's not the simplest thing in the world, just sitting and breathing kind of is. But it is quite an easy thing to do. So out for another test to just see if everything lines up. And one thing I do want to point out is this is all done in six times speed, or at least the editing has sped it up six times. Just because this thing was so unwieldy and so top heavy, everything was as you see right there, quite hard to do. So yeah, bear, bear, a, bear a thought for me and how long all this took. So I lost a little bit of footage between that last piece and this one. There has been a small redesign here. You'll notice that the cabin has been put up on top because it fits the theme a little bit better. I've also replaced the lower engine with one of those tiny radial ones you'll see down there. Uh, I thought this would be a much better way of doing things. Much more controlled, precise, finessed and elegant. These are the buzzwords I'm using for today's episode, you may have noticed. And wow, look at that. Will you just look at the distance? Unfortunately, it did kill Jeb. Uh, and that, that wasn't quite what I was trying to do there. You'll see I, I was thinking hard about what I could possibly do at this scenario. And I decided the best way to save Jeb's life was to use the thrust limiter. Now, I really didn't have any idea what sort of um, strength to set it at. Obviously, we wanted to get Jeb going as far as possible. Seriously, if you haven't got the theme and what's going on here yet, we'll, we will talk about that later. But obviously, we wanted Jeb to go as far as possible, but we didn't want to kill him. So I was thinking, oh, I don't know, maybe 10% to start with, and that did nothing. So maybe 25%? Well, that was a little bit better. That was a little bit better, but possibly not as good as it could be. So let's uh, let's try it again. Um, well, one thing that I did end up learning about this is it's not all about how hard you're thrusting. It's about how, what direction and where Jeb's facing, how, how full on he is taking it in the face. In the background there, we're watching the Marvels of Time Acceleration. Uh, isn't, isn't that brilliant? Uh, that, that was not at all what we were trying to do there, but it was something quite interesting to watch. Uh, right, and so we've, we've dialed, it, dialed it all the way up to like 75%. Now, I thought this would kill him outright, but still, we're not really getting all that much distance. 168 is our current record, but to me, this means that our prototype is ready and it's time to start talking about what we're actually doing here. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let me warmly welcome you to the first ever International Kerbal Space Center Open! Woo! Okay, maybe that was a bit much just for like some golfing thing. Uh, I know what you guys are thinking. Golf, really? I mean, I also was subjected to golf as a teenager and I, I hate it. Oh, I hate it with a passion. Like someone who was like forced to walk around on a Sunday morning in the cold and horrible. Can, oh, that, that, I'm not even going to get into it. I hate golf. But I thought this might be a fun thing to give a go. Uh, not only is it the Kerbal Space Center open, but is the post-apocalyptic Space Center open. Uh, I went in and modified all the save files here so every single building in the vicinity is absolutely destroyed which i think is amazing uh so you will see here i'm having a little bit of trouble um fine tuning the, the the shot that i'm trying to do here uh, i believe this being mainly due to the fact that you can see we're kind of riding on a uh, a force field a little bit there so we're not getting the ideal angle to shoot at but reasons or just excuses, this does mean I am up to three shots already and we have barely got off the runway. Uh, so the course as I have laid it out is from the spawn point on the runway to the spawn point on the landing pad. So we're just trying to get from one, one end of the, the space center to the other. 
ideally going through the buildings like we could just like nail it down the runway and that would be a lovely straight fairway if you will but that's not what i'm trying to do i'm trying to do something impressive or maybe entertaining i don't know Impre impressive is never really what i actually aim for so because of that we're going through the slightly more difficult building route uh so already we are up to oh i don't know about six shots now i should probably go through and count up if i've not done so already there should be now an overlay placed on of how many shots i've taken any of you also keeping count would have taken note that there were two swings swings in inverted commas where I missed and I've decided not to count those because well I'm learning guys get a break for reasons of brevity and trying to like not commentate rubbish over the top of everything and what I'm going to do from now on is start cutting out this long journey in between and maybe pick it up from about sort of 10 20, 20 meters away so we can see the all important layup for the shot and then watch the actual uh, shot itself as these are the important bits one of the main difficulties that i may or may not have mentioned earlier on is trying to line myself straight up with Jeb uh, this isn't actually jebediah with bill here um i'm obviously with the nozzle being quite a small diameter we had to make sure that it was lined up right behind his head and sometimes it didn't quite get that right and if you catch him kind of off to the side i think the fact that his head is almost spherical in shape means that the sport the forces are given off into quite a weird manner and once I'd got over that particular set of headaches, I then also had all the buildings to worry about, which made actually quite good obstacles. Um, you know, this is the equivalent of being like caught behind a tree or something. You really need to like chip around it before you can start going down towards the, the, the target you're actually after here. And it looks quite good as well going around through uh, all these ruins here. Yeah, no, it is really nice. Just, it was a nice setting. This po I'm glad I did the post-apocalyptic rather than trying to just do it normally because whilst that would have been great, it wouldn't have quite looked as epic. Or at least this is what I was thinking anyway. We're going to jump through these next few shots relatively quickly as because we are on a nice flat open grass plain, there wasn't really too much to do. I literally, I just, I drove forwards. I made sure I was lined up. I did a little putt and then drove forwards a little bit more until eventually we got built up onto the... the the launch pad area and i was like right well some people would call this good enough but not me i want him in the middle of that little pile of debris there and and so i, I set about doing so maybe i could have given it a little bit more on the thrust limiter but at this point i decided to call it a day and say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure guys as the sun sets on the first kerbal space center international world open i invite you to do the same uh the main consideration here is make sure your vehicle has some flair i will see you next time when we go into juna bye